Hello, my name is Juana Simães. I'm a Portuguese visual artist based in London. I moved to the UK in 2020 uh, to pursue fine arts and I recently graduated at Middlesex University. I grew up in a very small town in Portugal um, called Felgueiras, is in the district of Porto. I would describe it as a very, sm like a town like everyone knows everyone, um, almost and uh, very religious, I would say. Probably way more back then than what it is now. Since I was a kid, I've always been like super fascinated um, by the horror genre. I remember loving to watch horror movies and listening to scary stories. And my sister sometimes, because we share the bedroom when growing up, she would put like this TV, paranormal TV shows on. And I remember being super excited about it. And my brother, after when my grandpa um, passed away, he would go to my grandma's house um, for a weekend. And then when he came back, he always had like these crazy stories, like something, some stuff moving around and noises that he couldn't explain. And uh, I remember everyone being super present and super, you know, paying attention to this kind of stories. And I feel like overall, everyone in my family loved this kind of eerie atmosphere. And this kind of unsettling elements, you know, aspects of life is something that I'm still interested in. Um, I, I found like this horror and and settling elements to be, you know, possess some kind of beauty and, you know, comfort as well uh, for me. Um, in fact, like from my final essay, I wrote about the uncanny. And, you know, th that's when I started like, oh, so this is called the uncanny then. Uh, what I like, <laughs> this unsettling feeling. Um, and I feel like when I got more into my research, that's where I got like even more interested in the concept. And that's pretty much what I've been working on, uh, on my work. Um, and as well, combining that with um, the human condition and everything. Uh, who are your biggest influences? I would say Goya. Um, by the way, he portrayed the society at the time. Like the, the way he used like this morbid and dark colors the you know you also get like this very deep and dark pessimism going on very emotional very disturbing by the subject matter the way you portrayed it um very diabolical looking uh, another artist that i really love is uh, michael Bormans. what i love about his work is um it kind of he creates like these images he presented them to us and I feel like in the first glance, it looks just a, paint, a, a beautifully painted artwork. But then the more you look, the more questions you have. Because you do get a sense that something is not right. Like, you can tell something is off about it. And, you know, it kind of... He leaves the audience dealing with ambiguity. Uh, you know, and I feel like humans themselves, like, we don't know how to deal with ambiguity. Or it is, or it isn't. And um, it, and this is like something that I really admire and something that I try to bring to some of my work um, and explore it. Uh, what is the biggest challenge of being an artist? Um, I would say when we are like, when we're facing like an artistic block, I would say, because, so, uh, talking about like in my experience, um, I work as a waitress as well, which pays my bills. Um, but every single time I'm, I'm coming home, I don't feel like creating. I don't, I don't have the energy physically or uh, mentally. I'm not prepared for any of that. Like I'm exhausted. Um, what happens is the next day, I'm also not in the mood to do it. And this, and this leads me like to start procrastinating 
and it starts being like a snowball and it's really hard to get out of it especially be, and you just want to go back to it but you just don't have the strength to do it you just don't have the the motivation to do it you don't have any inspiration and it's really sad because as an artist we do this because it's our passion if we make money out of it is a plus but it's not necessarily why do we make it um you know art uh, and, you know, if you start, like, doing something you're really passionate about, it can get depressing very easily. Uh, and it's really hard to leave the situation. I feel like that's probably the most challenging part of being an artist. Because it's kind of, you have this addiction of creating, but then suddenly you don't have that addiction anymore. And just, I don't know if, it kind of makes you wonder what's your purpose. Um, uh, yeah. Um, if I could say... If I could say something to me when I was still at uni, I will say like, you need to get, you need to start thinking of what you're going to do after uni. You need to start like getting things done now. Don't wait for you to finish your degree, you know, start to apply to open calls, start creating a website, you know, start to go like to more galleries and exhibitions and make connections right now. Don't wait for you to do it because when the time comes, I feel like everything becomes very real at the same time and I don't know I feel like I wish I had like started thinking of this back when I was still at uni um so if I'm doing some research I prefer to be in complete silence um like I need to get my facts straight um you know I, mean, I need to be super focused about it but if I'm creating I need to have some music some movie going on because I feel like for example when I'm painting a part of me needs to be conscious uh, like focused but there's also this other part that needs to be a little bit loose you know because I feel like you need this balance otherwise I find like the work to come up constipated in a way like I feel like I'm putting too much thought in that like I'm making this bigger than it actually was meant to like and uh, and I find that sometimes it can be a lot of pressure on me um if I if I get too focused and uh, I don't know I feel like the word is it's not genuine anymore it just I feel like you need a little bit of the conscious and the subconscious part to work together uh what's the best reaction someone has had to your work there was like this girl, she sent me a message on uh, Instagram and she was saying, so I just had posted like a, a photo of my recent work. Uh, it was like called, it's called like Salmesh. It's basically a painting of 120 per 120. And she was saying like, she loved the painting. She thought it was beautiful and he made her cry. And I was so happy when I read that. Not because she was crying, of course, but you know, the fact that my painting someone something that I created had an impact on someone you know like thinking she found like somehow comfort in what I did I guess I don't even know if it was comfort or something else but the fact that he spoke to her you know it's kind of a reassurance that art is universal and art can touch anybody no matter your age no matter where you're from and you know, it, it's kind of a reminder that we all are linked by our human experience, you know, all the emotions we all held and everything. What do you hope people take away from your work? Um, I guess... I want people to feel provoked in a way if I want like kind of my work to talk with them and make them feel uncomfortable, if if not like uncomfortably exposed per se, you know, I kind of want you to remind yourself of you as an individual and you as a human. Um, there's something, you know, when people have, because I have friends like having reactions, my friends, it's like... You know, and I like that. I love that reaction. And, you know, something 
that is like this. I just need a reaction from them that it's not nice to feel. You know what I mean? Something that is uncomfortable to feel, something that is uncomfortable to watch, or even just because he talks to you, like he tingles your brain in a way, not in a good way. Uh, I feel like that's what I want people to, to kind of, you know, that's what I expect the audience to have, or I try to.